uh, we set everything up and, um, and we started the music. And I noticed just all these people kind of coming out from the street. And so right in, in front of us here, there's about 100 people or so, uh, or maybe more. And then over here on the right, a couple hundred. Over here to the left, a couple hundred. And then I look behind us, there's this bar behind us with the steps. And then I notice, wow, everybody from the bar is now outside on the steps. And then look across the street, there's like, I guess, a brothel. There. And there's all the women that are in there, they came out, and they're all like dancing, you know, like, <laughs> I love it. And then other people from their houses are stepping out on their porches. And I look out, guys, and it, to me, it looks about like a thousand or so people. And I'm like, what is happening here right now? And I had the, I mean, they blessed me by letting me preach in such an environment. And I preached. We did this drama. And um, I just felt so bold that night, and I was like, yeah, and right now, I just, I just proclaim freedom and salvation to the town of Makanga right now in Jesus' name. It just felt like such a moment. And I said, if you want to accept this King Jesus, if you want to have him in your life, I want you to raise your hand right now. And guys, I had never seen anything like it. Just like I described a moment ago, all these hands go raised, they step forward, and I look in front of me, and everybody has their hand raised. I look across the street, everybody has their hand raised, to the right, to the left, behind me, and the final count, we had five people counting in different areas, it was 1,250 people in one night. (laughs) Booyah. It's amazing. It was incredible. I mean, that is like every pastor's dream. Are you kidding me? Like that many people? It was amazing. Just like me, me, me. It was awesome. And so I prayed and and we all were praying for them. And and then we just saw the Lord start to do amazing things in that environment. And it really makes sense to me why Jesus gave instructions to the disciples. Like when you proclaim the kingdom of God that it's come, you know, heal the sick, cast out demons, demons. Do the stuff that only God can do. Do the stuff that I've been doing. And that will validate the truth of your message. Because as, and it made perfect sense there, because you can't pull out your book of apologetics and philosophy with these guys. They could care less. But if someone gets healed and you tell them that Jesus loves them, they're like, sign me up for that. I'm ready right now. Let's do it. And that's what happened over and over again. And there was a special presence of God to bring such healing and deliverance to people because it needed to validate a message they had never heard before. How is this true compared to other messages? And so that particular night in that outreach, um, at the end, I felt you know, very you know, pumped up on God and like really strong. And I said, all right. And I felt like I needed to pray for anyone who was blind. And so I said, if there's anyone here tonight and you're blind in one or both eyes, I want you to come forward. Have you ever had one of those moments where you wanted to take the words that you said (laughs) and put them back? Like, did I just say that? Uh, Was that adrenaline or was that God? I'm not sure. But nonetheless, the crowd parts and this this lady comes forward. She's in her mid-70s and she's kind of walking forward. And I could see her eyes Um, through the the light that we had provided, and they were completely cloudy and gray. She was blind. And she's being led, and she's walking forward like this. And um, I'm like, okay, I'm going to pray for a blind person right now. So I I started to pray, and um, I invited the presence of God, and and I commanded her eyes to be open just like Jesus did in the Bible. And, uh, and, and I, and this is all through a translator, by the way. And I asked the translator, I said, so, um, can she see any better? Can she see? And it comes back and she said, I can see a little bit better, like, but it's still kind of cloudy, but I can see a little bit. And I'm like, you can see a little bit? Like, she's completely blind. You can see a little bit? I'm like, okay, let's go with that. And, and I said, all right, let's pray again. And in that moment, I felt like I needed to do something in particular. And I started walking her towards the light that one of the light stands that we had up. And as I, it was such an amazing moment. It was just so cool. I walk her towards this light. And I kind of did this to the crowd, and there's like 100 people that, 200 people, they, they split down the middle, and they part, and this light is shining right into her face. And I point her forward, and I just pointed to the light, and I just said, light of God, come. Light of God, come. Light of God, come. Eyes open right now, in Jesus' name. And I looked at her face, and I'm so glad I had my eyes open, and I was able to see her response. She's looking, and suddenly I see her eyelids start to flutter. Her eyes kind of roll around a little bit. Her mouth opens, and she's shaking like this 
as, and I saw the color of her eyes change back to that deep, dark brown. And I see her trembling. And in that moment, I knew that woman was seen for the first time in her life. <laughs> so awesome. I mean, talk about New Testament. I mean, I felt like I'm living the life of Jesus and the apostles. 